Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I got the glad, glad. Got the glad, glad. You know, I'm just so grateful to God for, for just being God in my life. Even in spite of myself, God is still good all the time. And all the time, God is truly good. I don't know about the rest of y'all. Some of y'all may feel like y'all deserve what God is doing in your life, but I don't deserve the least of his blessings. That's why I always have an attitude of gratitude. Because he didn't have to do it. But grandmama say I'm so glad he did. Amen. We do honor my pastor and his absence on today. This, this great staff of ministers behind me on the roster, on the roster. Amen. Thank God for my wife this morning as always. My biggest supporter. Amen. And I thank God for you who thought of that Robert to come out to the house of worship just to, amen, share in this worship experience and to hear what thus saith the Lord on today. And I promise you, if you indulge me just for a few minutes, I won't hold you long because the message has already been preached. The message has already been preached. But just in case you didn't hear, you got one last opportunity, amen, on this day, amen, to hear from this pulpit what thus saith the Lord. When I say this pulpit, I'm including the choir yeah. because the choir don't preach the message. Yeah. Amen. So we thank God for you today. Amen. If you will, just join me. We're going to arrest you. Attention, amen, for one passage of scripture, chapter 41 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Just for a little while, if you will indulge me, we're going to speak from this subject. Faith that overcometh fear. Faith that overcometh fear. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we're so grateful and so thankful, Lord God, for this blessed opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk and proclaim your holy and divine word. We pray even now, Lord God, that you will hide me behind the cross, that your people see none of me but all of you. Stand in my body, speak through my mouth with power, conviction, with clarity and understanding, that your word may go forth on this day and fall on good ground, that just maybe there may be one here on today that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. But after hearing your word, they too might come crying, saying, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? Use me for your glory. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart truly be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Thank you. You may take your seat. Very, very uh, uh, interesting thought process as I tried to run from this particular passage of scripture. I was trying to go in a different direction, but God kept bringing it back to me. From Thursday night Bible study, Ms. Pope said she recognized that I wouldn't turn it loose. <laughs> the scripture was mm, so powerful, so powerful that God is trying to convey to his people, you got to learn how to trust in me. Even though we mess up, and we mess up all the time, even though we mess up, God said, I'm still with you. I'm still your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. He didn't say I'm going to take you out of everything. Some things we got to go through. The preacher told him this morning we got to go through something sometime to get to something. We find in our text here God began to encourage the people of Israel who have failed in so many ways. God tell them to do this, they choose to do that. God told them to go right, they choose to go left. So much so they begin to look at everything and everybody around them and begin to desire, amen, other gods. Their heart began to turn from God to our idol worship. Surely we don't worship idols, do we? Just because we don't worship goats and cows and 
whatever they did in the Bible days, your idol worship may be you. Your idol idol worship may be me. Your idol worship may be Willis C. Barnes. Your house, your car, your job. Whatever you find security in above God, you just put God, amen, at a lower level. So God began to challenge even the nations around him. He called them all to the solemn assembly. Let all the earth keep silent because God had something to say. But in the midst of all of that, he was talking to his children Israel about that impending judgment that was to come. Yeah, they're going into captivity. Some of you biblical scholars, y'all know the story. They had a serious Babylonian captivity. Seventy years, God said, you're going to be there so you might well get comfortable in that place. But why are you there? Know this. Although you might seem like I'm so far away, I'm with you. Because he already declared, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God said, you messed up. And it broke my heart. Not only did you do it once, but you keep doing it over and over and over again. But because the character of God, who is love, God can't turn his back on us. God won't turn his back on us. You can rest assured if you go to hell because you turn your back on God. God said, but this day I want you to know. Just like he said to his children of Israel, you are my people. You are chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Not that you chose me, but I chose you. From the foundation, before the foundation of the world, God chose you and I. Israel was not so good or great that God chose them, but God had a covenant agreement with Abraham. And because God is not slack concerning his promises, he began to show them. Even though you messed up, I'm going to remain faithful to my word. So we get here in this 41st chapter of Isaiah. When God began to speak to their hearts, to encourage their hearts, I'm not taking you out of your consequences. You got yourself in it, you're going through it. Don't come ask me to pray that you get out of jail when you know what you wrong was did, what you did was wrong. Don't come and ask me to pray for you that the judge change his mind. When you did what you did, that's a consequence for your actions. But my prayer would be that God, when you bring him out, or when you bring her out, I pray they have learned the lesson while they was there. Because if you don't learn your lesson while you're in the mess that you're going through with, you're going to come through and you're going to go right back in like the children of Israel. They go in the mess, God bring them out. They start getting comfortable on God. And they keep going right back into it. But God said, you got to come to a sure foundation in your faith in me because unless you become to a, a, a resolve in your faith in God you subject to trust any and everything any and everybody to see you through what only God can do not even you in all your degrees six figures all this that and the other it don't mean a hill of beans if God ain't in the midst of it the preacher told her this morning that we make some good decisions about our career sometimes. Yeah, we do. But when you listen and follow what God said, it's a great decision. And great is your reward. Because when you follow God, amen, you won't forget about those that, uh-uh, I ain't said that out loud, did I? Because some of us, we get so high and mighty, God had to bring us down. So how do God bring us down? Same thing he did with the children of Israel. Oh yeah, you're going into captivity. You're going into captivity. But you look at verse 4. What's it, verse 4? Let me read verse 4. Let me read verse, um, yeah, do I want to read verse 4? I don't want to read too much. I'm going to do verse 2. Who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nation before him, and made him ruler of, over kings. He gave them as the dust of the sword, and as driven stubble to the bow, here's his bow. 
In verse 3, say he pursued them and passed safely, even by the way that he had gone, not by his feet. God was something. I'm going to raise up somebody in the midst of your captivity. They're going to help you out of this situation. I'm going to bring you out. But while you're in there, you need to learn some things. You need to learn how to trust in me wholeheartedly. How many of y'all know that sometimes grace is going to run out? I don't know when, but grace will run out. When it's his time to call and my time to answer, I want to make sure Someone was saying, be caught up. Caught up in the rapture. If you caught up in the rapture, you made the right decision here. But if you're still looking around, wondering when is your time, won't be unto you. Let's get into the text. I just want to stop by this morning to encourage our hearts. I didn't know how God was going to take me with this thing. I said, Lord, since you're taking me, I'm going to let you drive. He showed me Seven different things that God is doing in this, in this particular text. He's giving them a command. Fear not is a command. But it's a command with a promise. God said, fear not, for I am with you. No matter what you're going through in life, no matter what your situation or your circumstance, although you may feel the fear, identify the fear, Move forward in your faith and trust in God. The preacher told us this morning, faith is responding to God. It's not enough for me to acknowledge what God said. It's not enough for me to acknowledge what is right and don't do it if I expect to reap the benefits of it. So the challenge become, God said, fear not. Why? Because I'm with you. Will you understand that God, the ever-present God is with us in this particular text, he began to, to, to challenge the children of Israel. He said, not because of who you are in sense of being the children, sons of Jacob. He said, because of what I said, I promised to Abraham. He called him Israel and he called him Jacob. Jacob dealing with that flesh. Y'all know Jacob, the supplanter, the, 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 what, what Jacob did, Jacob was a, he was a trickster. Jacob was a trickster. God said, not from that fallen nature, but from that upright spiritual nature of my my servant Abraham, the grandfather of Jacob, he said, I call you no longer servant, but I call you my friend. For those of us that say we're children of God, we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. God accepts us as his friend. And because we are friends, we need to know this. When we have, have friends like I have friends, I got friends that I can call on. I don't have to worry about Share my business and hearing it somewhere else. I got friends that when I need them most, they know how to come right to my rescue. But even in that, I don't get so, so, so wrapped up and tied up in my friendship with man. But I thank God for the God that's working in and through them. So much so that I don't have to ask for everything. God knows my situation. God knows my circumstance. He said, but don't be fearful. Some of y'all going to lose your job. Some of y'all gonna, uh huh. Some of y'all gonna use the home. Some of y'all gonna use your, lose, you lose the car. And he told me, what you going through it on your job, it was for you. And you failed. You failed to represent me, the God of your salvation. And I said, Lord, I thank you. I got to trust in you. That no matter what my situation, what my circumstance, I got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord for as much as I know that my neighbor is not in vain in the Lord. God said, fear not, for I'm with you. Then he goes on to say, be not dismayed. Be not dismayed. That word dismayed, talking about becoming distressed, discouraged, disillusioned. We got so many things that plague us and it's all due to stress because we're worried about everything but we don't take anything to God in prayer by faith. And if we take it to God in prayer and we don't have the faith and the thing don't change then we want to blame God. He don't love me anymore. 
That's what the devil wants us to think. The devil wants us to think that God do not love us when we mess up. It's just like any good parent. Just because your child go to jail, do you still love them? Are you still their parent? You can't do nothing about the relationship. That's a done deal. You can't do nothing. You can't call them you're not your child. I don't care if you say the word, it's still your child. And DNA proves it. Do your DNA prove that you're God's? Do your DNA say you're a child of God? If that be the case, the Holy Spirit live within you. When you check my DNA, you're going to find that Holy Spirit live within me as a child of God. As imperfect as I am, but I'm learning each and every day to live by faith so that the words that I proceed out of my mouth will line up with the actions, amen, that I portray. God said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be distressed. Don't be disillusioned. He said, why? Because I'm your God. No matter what you've done, Israel, no matter what you've done, children of God, he said, I'm still your God. He's faithful, even unto death, even the death of the cross. God is faithful that promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said, be not dismayed. I am the, thy God. This is the part that really touched me. He said, I will strengthen you. I'm going through all these I wills in this 41st chapter of, of, of Isaiah. If you flip the numbers and 44, 41 becomes 14. If you go to Isaiah 14, you find the devil talking about I will, I will, I will in a bad sense. But here in 41, we got God saying, I will, I will, I will. God said, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm not going to take you out of your mess. I'm not going to come and, come and pat you on your back in agreement. He said, in my love and kind and my tender mercy, I'm going to be with you because you're my child. I'm going to encourage you through the process, but you're going through the process. He said, but know this, I'm going to give you strength. God said, I'm going to give you strength to endure whatever it is that you have to go through. The cross said, he's not going to put no more on you than you can bear. But it's necessary for us to go through some of the things that we're going through with. This ain't your jumping and shouting message today, but I want y'all to know some. It's okay. And I will not apologize. God said, I will strengthen you. If God said it, I believe it. Do you trust him? Or do you just believe him? Because if you believe him, are you going to fall to your fear? Or are you going to allow your faith to overcome it? God said, you're going through. But I'm going to strengthen you. Why are you going through? I'm not going to take you out. But I'm going to strengthen you. Why are you going through? Because he's all power. He said, I will help you. That's a term of endearment. That's come from his relationship side. He said, I'll strengthen you by my righteous power. He said, but I'm going to help you because you're my child. I'm going to help you with this. And rather than helping me go to hell, God said, I'm going to help you through the process. You're going through, but you're not going through by yourself. The omnipresent God is forever with us. In every situation, in every circumstance. But the devil will have us to believe that the moment I mess up, my relationship with God has been broken. No, my fellowship with God may have been broken, but my relationship is still intact. I'm still a child of God. I just need to repent and get that thing right and keep moving on. Why? Because God said he's with me and he's going to give me the strength that I need to do it. He said he's going to help us through the process. Not only did he say, I will strengthen you and I will help you, he said, I'm going to uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. We're talking about a God that cannot fail. We're talking about an eternal God who's all power, the omnipotent one. In him there is no failure. The one who can't make a promise and not live up to it. Titus 1 and 2 said he cannot lie. So God said, I'm giving you all this to help you through the process. But know this, when you go through, 
even though fear may be present, fear not. Have faith in God. Trust me through the process. Keep your eyes on me through whatever you're going through because you're going through. I love you too much to pull you out of it. How that sound? He said, I love you too much to pull you out of it. And you ain't learned nothing. He said, if you love me, reciprocate to me what I'm doing to you. Give back to me what I put in you in the person of the Holy Spirit. Operate in the power that I've given you in the person of the Holy Spirit who lead guys and direct into the path of truth. In the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. We quote the scriptures. In this we know. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. He said, if you know it, act like it. What do you know? What do we know? I know that God is with me. No matter what men may say. Someone said, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. How near is he? He lives within me in the person of the Holy Spirit. That in itself is a reassurance to help us to have faith beyond, amen, the here and now. Just because God don't come through when we think he ought to come through. He says, stay the course. Trust me through the process because you're going through. I see I got my hands on you. We talked about Peter this morning. Lord, save me. Immediately, God reached out. Jesus reached down and raised him up. How far do you think he, Jesus had to be to reach down and raise him up? He was right there. He was there all the time. Even when I was messing up, even when I made a willful decision to go against the perfect will of God, he was right there. Every time I make a decision to go against the will of God, it's a deliberate act on my part. I'm saying to God, I know you're looking. I know what you said. But I'm going to do it anyway. Because of your, day, your delayed response, I feel like I can endure whatever it is you got to put on me. But when God hit us where it hurt at, sometimes God had to hit us in our pocket. Sometimes he strike a family member. God said, you need to hear me when I'm telling you. You're going through. You're going to have some tough times in life. He said, but know this. I'm going to strengthen you because I'm your God and I love you. He said, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. God wants us to be assured of today that as we're going through this busy walk of life, making mistake after mistake, we got to come to a resolve to know how to trust in him through the process. Every time we take matters into our own hand, we tend to make a mess of things. But God said, I want y'all to be reassured. I'm the man. Dottie P, not with the Dottie P, but I got this. God said, I got this. I got this. But you got to relinquish it. By faith, turn over to the Lord and leave it there. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. He already told Israel, look what he told him in verse 11. Behold, all they that were instanced against you, against thee, shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will uphold you, will hold you with my right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not. Why? He said, I will help you. You have to recognize who we have in God, who we are in God, and what we possess in God. That's our problems as Christians. We really don't understand what we possess in having God as our, Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We don't understand what we possess, amen, as having the, the only true and living God as the God of our salvation. I'm talking about the God, amen, who loved me so much so that he gave his only begotten son to die on my behalf. If that's not the greatest demonstration of love, what more can he do? What more can he do? He laid the foundation and opened up the way. What more can he do? Faith. 
that overcome fear. It's necessary for us to be victorious in this life as believers. Just because we're children of God, we're not exempt from the cares of this world. We're not exempt from the troubles that befall us in this world. We're not exempt from the penalty of our own ch choices. But we should know one thing without assured, without be assured of this one thing that God is ever with us. He's not condoning us in the process. He's allowing punishment to take place. But even in the midst of punishment, he's compassionate. He's loving. He's merciful. He desired that none would perish, but all should come to repentance and receive everlasting life. So what I'm going through with can benefit you. What you're going through with can benefit me depending on how we go through. Are you going to go through as a champion of faith? Or are you going to go through mumbling and grumbling and complaining like the children of Israel? Are you going to be a champion of faith on today? Are you going to stand up Amen. In, a, in the midst of a dying situation, speak to that situation, tell them how big your God is. Or you're going to fall prey, stick your tail between your leg, whine, and run on off about your business, expecting things to get better. God said, no, this is a faith walk. And if you're lacking in your faith, you can't please me, and it's evident I can't please you. Why? Because you can't trust me. He said, if you can trust me, you'll do what I said. Isn't that what the word of God say? How can you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? He ain't asking for much. Everything God asked you and I to do, he already did it. How many of y'all on the job can say you did that, that happening? I put my job before my, my manager right now. He have no clue what to do or how to do it. But I go through whatever I'm going through in this day. I have a high priest who have already been tempted in every aspect of life just as I. So when I go to Jesus, in prayer, he know what to do. Turn it over to God. Trust in God with all your heart. Lean not to your own, own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him that he may direct your path. It's a simplistic message. But as simplistic as it is, we so easily miss it. This is not my traditional three-point message today. God said, I want y'all to hear me when I tell you this. Fear not. I'm with you. In spite of your sinful selves. Hear this. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will remain with faithful to you even though you're not faithful to me. He said, hear this. As you're going through, I'm going to strengthen you. I'm going to strengthen you because I love you. He said, hear this. I'm going to help you through the process. I'm not going to deliver you out of it. I'm going to deliver you in the midst of it. Is that not what he did for the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace? Did he take them out of the fire or did they go through the fire and through the flood? Seeing lightning flashing from above. Storms are raging. Hell breaking out all around me. Hell hounds on my track. And sometimes we get caught by the hell hound because we're too busy looking back. I keep pressing on in faith. Although it look like I'm losing, I'm not worrying about the, 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 the end result because it already been declared. I just need to go through the process trusting in God. And when I come through, I'm able to strengthen and help somebody else. The sister gave a testimony about her eyes. Some of us got eyes and can't even see. 2010 vision but can't see. Some of us got a heart, but don't know how to love. Some of us got intelligence, but deny the very power of the one true and living God. But God said, I want you to know something. There's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to come to the realization 
that I am the true and living God. And besides me, there is no other. When life gets through beating you down, you're going to run to God in a hurry. We're going to be like Jonah, amen, when God threw him, allowed him to be thrown up onto dry, dry ground from the belly of the big fish. He came out with a lot of mess. But Jonah got in a hurry to be about God's business. God said, I want you to know something. I got purpose in you. I created you with purpose. And the only way you're going to get to that purpose, if you've got to go through the hardships of life, he said, so be it. It's your choice. He said, but know this. I'm with you. I'm still your God. But if you die and go to hell, it's your choice. He's the God of the dead and the living. Y'all didn't know that? Even if I go to hell, God created me. He didn't say I was your father. He said I'm God. Everybody can't call him my father. Everybody can't say I'm a father. Because we, we, we don't have that kind of relationship. But God wants to be assured that in the midst of our going through, life itself is fearful. Life is filled with so many uncertainties. But if we can go through being steadfast in our faith in God, we would come to the realization and knowing that the ever-present God is always with us in the midst of all that we go through. Knowing that he will strengthen us. He will help us. He will uphold us with the right hand. Y'all know what right hand signify? Power and authority. He said, I'm going to uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. That's the innate power of God. And guess what? You and I possess that power in the person of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to my seat. What has sparked this, this thought process in my heart? Thursday night live, we had Bible study. Me, Miss Pope, and two students. Me, Miss Pope, and two students. That's all we had. And it was enough in the word of God in that moment to keep us for the whole hour and a half. And we used every bit of it. I know Minister Chad was on a different mission. He normally would be there. But that was a story from my study line. That was a, a celebration for a man who was 78 years of age. And in the midst of that celebration, a question arose to this, 80, this 78 year old man. And the question was, what is the most important thing that you have learned in these 78 years? And his, his response was simply this, to hang in there. His only response was to hang in there. Now you wonder why after seven to eight years, all he can say he learned in seven to eight years was to hang in there. And it's not that he was just being, trying to be positive and all that kind. He had been through so much that through life experience, he learned how to trust in Jesus. He had learned how to trust in God. So I want to challenge us on today that as we go through this busy walk of life, allowing our faith to overcome our fear, we just need to learn to hang in there. Some say it'll be all over in the morning. But when you wake up in the morning, where would I be? I don't know about you, but one of these getting up mornings, I'm going to wind up Amen. To the place I've been living for. I'm striving to make heaven my final home. I'm not striving and living to get saved. I made that decision. And God has given me salvation through Jesus Christ. But every waking moment of my life, I have decided to trust in Jesus. I have decided to trust in God. Because I understand and I realize that if it had not been for God, who was on my side, I would not be here today. I had to come to the realization that the ever-present God, when he said he's going to strengthen me, he's going to do that. When he said, I'm going to help you, he's going to do just that. When he said, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, I trust God at his word. I can't always see my way through, but I know if I just keep my eyes on God, trusting in God, this too shall pass. So be encouraged. Be not dismayed. Whatever betides me. Because God will take care of you. 
you got to take care of yourself, amen, by learning how to trust solely in God. I won't let you down intentionally, but there's only so much I can do. As much as I love you, there's only so much I can do. If you want to get out of debt, I'm not the one to bring you out of debt by, purchase, by giving you the money, but I can teach you a strategy to help you get out of debt, to help you get your finances in order, to help you be good stewards of where God bless you. I can't keep you from going to hell, but I can give you a plan of salvation that will help you come to a resolve for yourself to trust in the only true and living God. Silver and gold, have I none, but such as I have, give unto thee. Don't give up. Allow your faith to overcome your fear because things in this life is not going to get better. And we, we can see the evidence of it. It's not getting better. The word declared that the word is getting weaker and wiser, but you and I as a people, we got to get better in how we learn, how we trust in God. We got to stop talking faith and start being about faith. We got to stop talking God and start living like we're children of God. Don't you know that everything the Father has is already yours? So whatever I lose on this side is okay? It's easier said than done. I understand that. But when I leave here, what's going to happen without everything I gather up here? We spend most of our time worrying about those things that's going to perish and fade away. But God has given us everlasting life in Jesus Christ. Make the decision for Christ. Live for Christ. Learn how to trust in God through the process. Because when you make a mess in your life, you're going through. And it's not always that you made a mess, but it's sometimes God allowed you to go through to perfect what he had put in you. Yeah, we got storms of correction, but we also have storms of perfection. So don't think every time I'm going through something that I, that, that I did something wrong. I know when I did it wrong. And I'd be just like Jonah was. I'm the reason why you're catching the hell on this boat. I understand. I'm the one. That while I'm down here asleep, why y'all bother me? We got those folks in our life that we got so comfortable with. We going to dump them everything on them. Tell them all our personal business. And our situation getting worse. And we don't understand why. Mind who you're talking to. Tell it to Jesus. Someone that can do something about it. Let's be encouraged. I'm finished. I'm finished. I didn't know what God was going to do with that. But one thing I'm assured of, I did what he told me to do. And it's on you. To take it or leave it. I won't be offended if you leave it. But my heart will be sad when I get the glory and I don't see you there. But I won't feel guilty because I did what he told me to do. As we prepare to open the doors for those that may be here today who have not made a decision for Christ in your life. Because if you have not made a decision for Christ in life, you're going to continue to walk a little defeated life. Your fears.